in Wealth of Formation, a weekly conversation for followers of Jesus. I am Kara Watts, and I am excited to be here for the second week of Advent with my friends. Hello. <laughs> you Renee? I'm Renee. <laughs> Shannon Moore. And we, yeah, we're already to the second week of Advent, and we have been, or are slowly working our way through a book called Abundant Simplicity by Jan Johnson, and it is Discovering the Unhurried Rhythms of Grace. Mm -hmm. And so last week we talked quite a bit about just ideas of that pruning, cutting back in our lives with all the things that we have, that's a spiritual practice mm -hmm. and something that as we approach Advent is important. Um, and, and that if we add holy things, but we don't make room right. for them, the even the holy stuff just makes us crazier. Right, right. It's it's too much. Mm -hmm. And so, um, and, and thinking along those lines, today we'll be thinking about living living light in a land of plenty so what what is it about all that we have and how can we find spiritual practices within that and what does that look like um, as we approach um, the season and so i have a question for you all what possessions or possession do you own or have you owned in the past that seems to own you that causes more work maybe you know, I think in the last 10 years of my life, maybe a little bit more, um, there have been few. Uh, I can't think of anything. Really? I, I have, because of work and maybe because of my divorce, I have uh, been able to take ministry opportunities and move around a lot. Mm -hmm. So moving around, being nomadic, has mm -hmm. caused me to be, you know, I have a few things less each time I move. Right. Mm -hmm. And so I think I got freed from that and when I entered my nomadic period. <laughs> which you'll, you'll which has expert, other problems. Right. But. <laughs> you'll be an expert on helping us through this today. <laughs> Shannon, what about you? Um, I've, I've also sort of cleaned mm -hmm. out some stuff, but I probably the thing that is, that would, mo I, I love retro things and antique things. And so I have, things that I don't necessarily need but I like like old television and old stereos and a home phone um, that sort of thing that I don't really need but I like mm -hmm. so those are there so it still tugs at you as an acquisition even though it's yeah. not you're you're not on the normal path you're not regular <laughs> 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 but but it is I mean it's it's com I mean, it makes, it makes yeah, you excited. It, it, it right. does. It, it's, right. it's a, but it's not necessary. Right. And, and I think that, you know, Johnson in this chapter, this is chapter five in the book Abundant Simplicity, she kind of tries to balance what that looks like. She tells the story of a family who, before they bought anything, always ask, you know, well, if we're going to buy this, that's great. But if not, what else could we have done with this money? What mm -hmm. else could we do? Mm -hmm. And so how that kind of helped guide their family and the decisions that they made. And so I think that there's a balancing act to take. Do you think that you have anything that owns you? Uh, I Loafers. Uh, loafers. Oh, loafers. <laughs> <laughs> I do love loafers. But but I will say for years, uh, you know, this. I started wearing loafers when I was in fourth grade, I think. And I remember getting my first pair. And I would just get one pair a year because they were expensive. So for years, I would only buy one pair of loafers a year. And by the end of the year, I mean, I wear them every day. They looked horrible. Now I found, you know, a different thing. A, and so now I... You're in a I phase of like many I'm, loafers? I'm, I'm in the phase of many loafers. It's still a very <laughs> limited supply, but... I think Dolly Parton wrote a song about that. <laughs> No, that was the coat of many oh. colors. Oh, okay. not, have one of not the woman of many lovers. <laughs> I was very red. Sure, is, oh, my goodness. I'm making fun of my loafers. Um, anyway, I think just I have an abundance of stuff that's not meaningful mm -hmm. and, you know, that that mm. needs to be pruned, that takes up energy. And we can talk about that in a little bit, but just that idea of decluttering. For me, that's mm -hmm. what it is. It's the... By not putting it away in that moment, I'm making a decision to just to have a pile of things. Because I, I think Shannon's kind of even mindful mm -hmm. as something new comes into the house. Okay, what where, where cabinet is that going to go in? I mean, mm -hmm. yeah. if we don't have a place for it, then, yeah. right? Yeah. Isn't that a kind of a discipline of yours? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think we have more and more just, I mean, there are, there are entire television series that 
yep. teach you how to do that. Mm-hmm. I don't. I didn't grow up with those sorts of things. How to organize, how yeah. to declutter. Yep. Right. I I remember my grandmother who had a tiny house and a closet in the bathroom. It it did not matter what you needed. She had it in there, but it was never. Over, it was orderly. It was orderly. It was, she just had one thing, and if you needed that, she would replace So just, there are ways to like do that. this. She didn't have multiple. No, no. She didn't need a she whole bunch of She had just enough towels that we might need. Ah. You know, just, it was really kind of remarkable. And so, um, but it's hard. For me, it's, it's a harder thing to do um, in dealing with other people that live in my home. You know, children <laughs> that have their own lives and their own things. So working through that. Um, you know. If we're all about simplicity and finding simplicity during Advent, um, and we're trying to prune, one thing that Johnson talks about is frugality, that we need to move to that. So, Renee, if you will read that portion of her book. I will, from page 76, if you're following along with us. While frugality might mean penny-pinching, stinginess, or bargain-hunting to some people, the word means something different for followers of Christ. Lutheran scholar James Nash explains its Latin root, frux, frux, how do you think you say that word? (laughs) F-R-U-X, conveys the essential character of frugality, fruitfulness and joyfulness. It finds joy in justice and fullness in restraint. Frugality connotes moderation, thrift, cost effectiveness, satisfaction with material sufficiency, I like that phrase, material sufficiency. Similar to the contentment described in the first Pauline letter to Timothy, uh, 1 Timothy 6, 6 through 10. Consider those phrases again, joy in justice, fullness and restraint. That's what abiding in Christ is like. It's abundant. Through extremely practical, though extremely practical, frugality is also deeply spiritual. It trains us to put our trust in the one who is unseen and eternal, to be good stewards of what is seen and temporarily entrusted to us by God, and to be generous and willing to share. To practice frugality is to begin to believe that the most real stuff of life is never what we own. It's our interaction with the living God with whom we partner to bless others. Practicing frugality does not give us something extra to do, but guides decisions as we decisions we already make. Does that make what does that last sentence mean? I think it means that when we live a life of frugality, it's it's not the giving up of things or not having things. It's the decisions that we're making those decisions based on a sense of frugality. Okay. I, I think. What do you think? I, I think that's right. It's living a certain way mm-hmm. instead of now I'm going to be frugal about this or, or having to even think about it. Just a, a state of being, I think, right. in a way. But there, so that it comes that naturally and not not necessarily that you have to tap the brakes every time you're... But as you were reading that, what it what it sounds like to me is it comes from a place of trust in God and in what is available that it's not that scarcity mindset it's it's a practice i was thinking about a family back (laughs) in my childhood that was known for they had three kids and so the five of them the parents and the three kids would come to the store and the dad would get a little coke remember they used to come in the little glass bottles and like each kid and the mom would take a sip out of it and then he would finish it off so i but now you're was, making a well, I always, face like you're sad. Oh uh, well, well it was. I thought it was kind of sad then, um, because I think there's a difference between frugality and like stinginess or cheap, mm-hmm. you know. Right. Um, I don't think that was a spiritual discipline. I think that was something else. It was uh, practice. I mean, uh, you know what I mean. Yeah. I think there's the a different. There's different ways to approach it. Right. You could do the same thing, but it depends on the. Tent mm-hmm. and the, where, the where, what place does it come from? Is it frugal or is it? And maybe you were scarcity. experiencing what you saw from the perspective of the children, probably so, and imagining mm-hmm. how that was for them. Mm-hmm. Whereas the dad was feeling really good about maybe so not having too much Coca Cola. Was it Coke? Mm-hmm. 
I'm looking down at the bottom of the page and it says practicing frugality forms character by helping us learn humility. But and there's some humility in that that story yeah. that mm-hmm. you just there told. Is. But it all it's in hard. kind of a heavy way though, don't yeah. you think? Mm. For the kids cuz yep. I'm thinking mm-hmm. about here's a family where the dad may have taken pride in their simple life, but the kids think that yeah. look there's shannon moore over there and he thinks that we, he's got a full-size pet he has a whole oh, and y'all got that little coke <laughs> well and i think that there's <laughs> and, and johnson in, in this chapter talks about that that just kind of statistical curve you know of when you don't have enough like to meet your physical needs um to meet the needs that you have for for shelter and for food and those sorts mm-hmm. of things but once you get just past that how kind of just happiness and, and contentedness begins to increase. And then it's pretty good. And then once you have too much, mm-hmm. it starts and to crash again. I and can see how that would Yeah. And so just mm-hmm. finding that balance of what is enough mm-hmm. and what is enough for us to survive and, and to recognize that we're blessed and, mm-hmm. and provided for and, and also – able to help potentially others or to right. look in different ways. Um, and so that idea of being content. And in 1 Philippians chapter 4, verses 11 um, through 12, it says this, Not that I am referring to being in need, for I have learned to be content with whatever I have. I know what it is to have little, and I know what it is to have plenty. In any and all circumstances, I have learned the secret of being well-fed and going hungry, of having plenty and of being in need. You know, mm-hmm. I mean, that's kind of, I mean, Paul speaking to to the church and just saying, we've had both, and we probably have all had both at some point and what that feels like. And what does it, what does it feel like to be content when you feel like mm-hmm. this is what it is? Can you put words to what that is? I think it's such a, small window sometimes because mm-hmm. once people hit content as you said yeah. then you know I heard somebody say one time you know how much is enough money and the answer is always a little bit more <laughs> um, so it's hard to find mm-hmm. that sweet spot of you know what this is this is enough I, I find that I'm most proud of myself when I can do that with food mm. <laughs> you know <laughs> this is right. I don't have to finish that yeah. I'm thinking of times when I've gone had the opportunity to go on a retreat and stay in a sort of monastic setting mm-hmm. one chair twin bed you know little sink in your room mm-hmm. and and obviously that is so helpful in getting you where you need to be what you're mm-hmm. there to focus on anyway but there's something very in that simplicity, there's something very um, peaceful. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know that you you can get everything adjusted in the morning and make your bed, and you know yeah. you're just it's not your crazy right. you know, life of okay, where's the cat food? What am I doing here? Right. You know my just the yeah. the noisiness of stuff. Mm-hmm. Yeah, right. Yeah, the more we have, the folding more. the laundry, and okay, now this yes. drawer is full. Yes. Where should I put this? Do yes. I need to? Yeah, it's a lot. It, it, there's a lot. I, I think of those moments where, um, yeah, when I go someplace, I think that's it, and I'm away from all the stuff, mm-hmm. and it gives you that opportunity. Mm-hmm. That, in fact, that's one of the um, experiments offered in this chapter. Go away and just kind of sit with not a lot, and see how you do. See what it looks like. What can you take away? What do you need to, to keep there? So just, and to think of that as a spiritual practice during Advent, I think is important. Mm-hmm. How do we declutter our lives in such a way that it is a spiritual practice of pruning? Not a punishment. Not a punishment, not just uh, getting rid of stuff so you have more room to fill. <laughs> but what does it really look like to be content, to find that place of contentedness mm-hmm. as we kind of just wait in this Advent season mm. um, for the Christ child? I love Advent. <laughs> Simple. I love and thinking about these things. Mm-hmm. Thinking about simplicity right. in this season of excess yeah. is always good for us, I think. Right. Especially as we're you know, it's a real shopping and doing all I the really things. I really want to have, I, I feel this tug anytime I go by, 
house with amazing Christmas decorations outside mm-hmm. and all the trees wrapped. And I'm like, oh, I like that so much. But now I, I've figured out I just, a couple times a week, just drive up one of those streets and go, oh, this is beautiful. And then and I go it, home. And, and, and enjoy it for And it's time. okay. Yeah. And my trees don't have to have. That's yeah. their gift to you. Yeah. Thank you very much. I just go by and look at it right. and think it's lovely and that it doesn't have to be in my yard for right. me to enjoy it. Right. Absolutely. Yeah. So go on a Christmas drive. <laughs> Drink some hot chocolate. <laughs> um, thank you for joining us um, for Formation this week. If you have any comments or ideas, feel free to email us at formation at uccftw.com. We'd love to get your comments. Um, and we will see you next week for more Advent Talk. Advent blessings. Take care.